14% of Americans can't pay their medical bills. U.S. manufacturing production contracts for seven straight month, capacity utilization tumbles. An estimate of annual homelessness one month ago, by the federal government, shows that the number of people living on the streets increased 2.7% this year over last. There was another U.S. bank failure today, the fourth in four months. U.S. industrial production suffers worst year since 2015. U.S. household debt hits a record high of $14.15 trillion. Total U.S. household debt reached a record of $14.15 trillion at the end of the year after increasing by $193 billion, or 1.4%, in the fourth quarter of 2019, according to the Fed's quarterly report on household debt and credit. New home sales are now at a six-month low. The U.S. economy is much weaker than investors think. U.S. deficit surges 25% in fiscal 2020 and is $1.1 trillion over the past year. And this is just the start. Wait until the coronavirus effect hits, the numbers will be a lot worse. Donald Trump's fourth year in office will shatter the record for the largest annual increase in the national debt. It's an election year. And getting re-elected is more important than balancing the budget. Subprime auto loans explode, serious delinquencies spike to record. Auto loan and lease balances have surged to a new record of $1.33 trillion. Delinquencies of auto loans to borrowers with prime credit rates hover near historic lows. But subprime loans borrowers with a credit score below 620 are exploding at a breathtaking rate, and they're driving up the overall delinquency rates to financial crisis levels. The entire system of economic growth is fueled by the issue of debt vs savings and production. This gives the appearance of being far better than the reality. Call it a tale of two economies. Two new studies paint a contradictory picture of Americans' personal finances. One found that tens of millions of Americans can't afford their medical bills, just as news dropped that 401k, IRA and 403b balances reached a record high last year. There is no such thing as a market right now. The feds believe they can fix anything and everything by printing money, including cure coronavirus. This bubble will pop. My models show it will once the Fed goes to zero and can no longer stimulate the economy, and then we hit stagflation and boom. Welcome to the Atlantis report. Powell just said he's running repo loans well into April. Pumping all that liquidity into the system is like pumping dope into the veins of an addict. Sure, it feels great right now, but what happens farther down the line? Beware the prosperity illusion. The Fed protects gamblers at the expense of the economy. In fact, the repo is a $1 trillion a day credit machine, in which not just banks but hedge funds and other shadow banks borrow to finance their trades. This really proves that the Federal Reserve not QE, and repo magic works very well for the US elite super rich. The US elite super rich is delighted and not only richer but also even more powerful than ever before. 1. The Fed pumps trillions to lift the prices of US stocks benefiting the most the US corporations and its CEOs. 2. The CEO's cash in the options contracts that they have at the highest possible stock prices. They are fully loaded with it. Jeff Bezos just bought a $165 million estate, a California record. They really don't want to hit us over the head to wake us up. The US has been diligently pursuing a practical manifestation of the law or weights and measures since 1944 at Bretton Woods when the action was finally taken to end the fixed price peg on gold in order to get us to this point today. December's trade deficit was larger than expected, and the November deficits were revised higher. The decline was not due to higher exports from a booming economy, but lower imports due to tariffs. As a candidate, Trump claimed America's economic decay, as evidenced by decades of trade deficits that hollowed out the American industry. As president during the last State of the Union address, he proudly proclaimed that America's years of economic decay are over despite larger trade deficits now than before he was elected. Liquidity has been squeezed. Too much systemic debt. Over-leveraged debt cannibalizes economic activity. We need some monetary yang with our monetary yin to complete this fateful story. The free market provides the means. Meanwhile, this market is going up, new highs insight. Nothing can stop it, nothing, and nobody. The stock market is undeniably on fire. 
The major US stock market averages are near record highs, and it shows in 401k accounts. Fidelity Investments reports the average balance in a Fidelity 401k topped $112,000 in the fourth quarter of 2019. For workers who have saved in a 401k for 10 straight years, their average balance was $328,200. Last year, 33% of savers raised their contribution rates, and a record of 233,000 Fidelity customers are 401k millionaires. Market believes it has immunity to risks. That's because it does. Investors can count on the plunge protection team to step in as necessary to stop any sudden decline. That's the whole reason behind the precious metals manipulation. But eventually, someday they will either stop stepping in, or their risk mitigation tactics will no longer work. When that time comes. God help us all. Anybody that has spent any time following the markets knows that after every boom there is a bust. It has always happened in the past and always will in the future. When times are good to make plans for the bad days, when things are bad, hunker down and enjoy finding deals on things that were out of your price range a couple of years ago. What's amazing is that even though we have a great economy according to the stock market and certain politicians, the United States ran a nearly $1 trillion deficit in 2019. This is with unrelenting QE and other market stimulants in effect. Where do we go when the markets inevitably take a turn for the worse? If the economy is great, shouldn't the deficit be getting smaller? This is outrageous, unacceptable, and insane. This is monetary mismanagement. In the last financial crisis, they learned the American people did not want to bail out Wall Street banks. Now they are trying to do it in the shadows, but it is happening again. Main Street is bailing out Wall Street banks, but you won't hear this on the mainstream news networks. We are putting these irresponsible actives on a credit card that future generations will have to pay off, with interest. The response from our politicians, a demand for more monetary and fiscal mismanagement. Politicians and the Fed are responsible. Not only will the Fed be injecting more drugs into the financial system in a recession. Wait until they decide to take rates below zero. That would handicap the entire global financial system. Commodities, including gold and silver, will go through the roof, while U.S. stocks, U.S. dollars, and bonds come crashing down. The Fed policy attempts to keep rates down, as any sizable increase in rates will reveal very quickly that government and many corporations are insolvent. They have painted themselves into an apex and knew that this was their fate in the development of a fully free-floating global price model that can now and does support debt-free consumer-driven transactions in the real economy. And the hard-working taxpayer is stuck in the middle of all these levels. And as long that taxes are collected from the hard-working taxpayers, this is a never-ending story. This is quantitative fleecing for the taxpayers. It is up to the consumer to use the debt-free transactions to now support real growth and rising interest rates on the back of sustainable real economic growth. It's the consumer who has the stage now. All central bankers know this and are waiting for the free market to respond. Rates can then rise safely with an economic disaster. It's not the Fed's job to liquefy the economy all by itself. This should now become self-evident on the basis that real economic growth cannot be sustained by debt and debt alone. Assets have to be added into circulation, too, in order to work toward a symbiotic balance. Market law rules here. Yin needs its yang, as per the laws of the market, and the Fed is not permitted to enter debt-free gold-backed market currency, with market pricing, into circulation from the top down. In a real-time environment, what's new, a top-down approach would only prove to be devastating as it would pop the debt bubble in a knee-jerk rush to judgment. This cannot be permitted. We need a leak, not a pop. Entering any debt-free medium into circulation must be market-driven, organically, where the consumer now has the stage, the tools, the capability, and the blessing of free market law. This economy is like a heroin addict. And the Fed is the supplier. They can keep increasing the dose kicking the can down the road until an overdose happens or go cold turkey and face the withdrawals, bubble popping. Either way, they've backed themselves into a corner. The virus scare, sleepy sniffer Joe, Barr's recent crying, I could go on and on, but these are all distractions. The economy in the United States is in free fall, just like Europe and China. These distractions are all designed to keep your eyes off of the truth. The propaganda is at blistering levels out of every government about how great everything is. 
The participation rate numbers in the economy are well below those of the 08 recession. The federal government is desperate. There are not enough tax dollars coming in to pay the bills. The debt is being monetized to dilute the currency. So everything for ordinary people is going to get really expensive because your paper currency by design is meant to go to zero through the inflationary Ponzi scheme. Right now, the supply chains are being severely disrupted, and US corporate profits worldwide are going up in smokes. The market was never allowed to correct itself. Bailouts continue to prop up a false market, and costs for goods and services reflect that false market, thus perpetuating this vicious cycle. Would any of you get on the Titanic if you knew that at some point during the voyage, it will hit an iceberg, sink in the North Atlantic, and over 70% of y'all die a tragic death? My point is that it's not worth it to stay at the party, eat caviar and escargot, drink champagne and dance, knowing that at some point during the voyage, you have a 70% chance of dying a tragic death. I would rather never have gone on the Titanic, knowing that I have a 100% chance to live. Simply put, take the crashes of 1929, 1987, 2000, 2008, and add them together, then multiply by 100, and you still won't get how bad the next crash is going to be. This one is going to last for decades. Looking forward to the death of fiat currency. Bankers will jump out of the windows like in 1929. The year of records. The USA is adding to her deficits at a record run rate, stocks are climbing to record highs at a record rate of climb, it's the longest period of economic expansion. Collectively the central bank's balance sheets are at record highs, and finally, the Fed's temporary not QE, repo interventions expand again at a record pace. What could go wrong here? This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.